Welcome back, people, or welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Gartes Gartesian. Uh, if you've never seen my videos before, basically, I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of moving to Armenia. This episode, I'm going to talk about getting an apartment, renting an apartment in Armenia, what it's like, what my process was like, and how it's so different than getting an apartment in the States. Basically to, to recap kind of what how I ended up into the current house that I'm in now, when I first got to Armenia and I was trying to figure out my life, I moved into an Airbnb um, for the first, I booked it for a month, but it was an absolute shit show. So I was only there for one week. It was a mess. There was like, the pictures looked great, but there was like no windows. There was like a broken toilet seat, no soap, no toilet paper, no tissues. The paharam was broken. The half the lights didn't work. So I tried to get out there as soon as possible. Luckily, um, the birthright pathway house was available <clears throat> at the time that I came. So I switched from, I canceled the Airbnb in Yerevan and I went to the, to the pathway house for a few months where you saw my old videos. This one I found um, through List AM. Basically in Armenia, you have two options. Well, three. One option is going through List AM. If you've never heard of List AM, it's basically the equivalent to Craigslist, but for Armenia. You can go there for used um, or new, but mostly used like things like cars, real estate, like finding apartments. You can even buy houses or shop for houses, or you can buy like random things like tools and machinery and equipment. The other option is to go through a what they call an agent, which is basically like a real estate agent. Sometimes they call them brokers. If you hear somebody say broker or agent here, it's basically all the same thing. Basically what that person is, is someone that you pay to help you search for your house or your apartment. When I ask like people's opinion about using an agent or a broker, half of them said, yes, definitely go with it. They're very helpful. And the other half said, stay away. They're just a scam. So when you get these two different, completely different opinions, I kind of just wanted to do it myself because some people said they were great. Some people that said they sucked. There are a couple of Facebook groups that post uh, new real estate, new apartments available. And I actually reached out to some of these brokers and you would think that th since this is their job that they would stick with it because I'm, I'm reaching out to them because they're, po they're posting new, uh, they're posting about new apartments. They're posting about new houses, some furnished, the prices, the pictures. So I reached out to some of them, explaining them what I, what my criteria are, and one of them, one or two of them, messaged me back with a couple of links, and then never talked to me again. But you would think like I would go on some kind of mailer list, whatever. So the brokers, they cared, but not really that much. One or two of them didn't even respond to me. Uh, when I knew it was coming to crunch time, I started going on List AM. The thing about List AM is that like there's so many variables that you don't, you don't really know about until you start like calling people around. The first variable is. I suggest to search for apartments by Dadam when you, there's a filter and you can filter it by Dadam. The American one, the, when it's in American USD, it can get kind of confusing because you never really know like if that price is even right. Are they using Dadam equivalent numbers, but they just use the American equivalent? So for example, like let's say the apartment is 100,000 uh, Dadam per month. Sometimes, I don't know if they're just old and they don't know how to use the website, but they'll put 100,000 US dollars. But then when I showed the ad to my friend, they're like, no, they probably meant 100,000 dirham, but they just chose the wrong option. The second thing to really keep in mind about the way that they list real estate in Armenia is that they count living rooms and like kitchens, common areas as a room. So in the United States, basically, when you are looking at real estate, you put like two bedrooms, one bath, meaning there's a living room and there's a kitchen, but there's two bedrooms. Here, if you do two bedrooms, one bath, that one of the bedrooms could be the living room or one of the bedrooms they could be count, they could be like a really big hallway. So you don't really know, there's no standard. There's no standard of what's considered a room and what's not considered a room because a lot of people, not a lot, but sometimes you see people like living in their living room, like their bed is in their living room. So be very, be very curious and ask a lot of questions when it says two bedrooms, three bedrooms, ask them like, are all of them bedrooms or all are is one of them a living room that you're considering a bedroom because there's no standard the other thing that i want to suggest if you're looking on the list am is clarify or make sure you really read the detail um if the uh, amount is per day or per month because when i was searching i would put the category for armenian dharam currency and then i would put per month 
price per month. But then people were listing things for daily prices. So I was like, oh, this is great. There's a there's an apartment for 20,000 dirham per month. That's amazing. But then you read it, it's like, no, it's $20,000 per day in the description, but it's labeled on the website per month. So really make sure if it's a really low number and it's super remodeled and super nice, it's probably a per day cost, even though it's labeled as per month, whatever. When you see the words renovated and euro renovated, it's, it's all the same thing. Basically, it just means there was an upgrade. The majority of what you're going to find are going to be in the traditional, basically Soviet bloc apartments, but no two are the same. So the one, you know, you can't really say like, this is a nice building. Basically, it depends on each individual unit because one person, if they totally remodel it, it's obviously going to be nicer than the one next to it that's completely decrepit. In the States, it usually goes by the building. So you're like, this is a really nice building. I want to be in that building. It doesn't matter which apartment. Here, it's extremely specific to that individual unit. You could have a total shithole and then right next to it could be a beautiful renovated apartment. They're completely, there's there's no saying what's going to, what it's going to be like once you're inside. The next thing I want to talk about is how relaxed it is. And when I say how relaxed the process is, this is kind of how, this is like a very cultural thing. Sometimes being relaxed is good and sometimes being relaxed is uh, not good. In the States, I'm used to having um, appointments. And I, when you want to, when, when you want to view the apartment, you make an appointment, you show up, they have a full contract once you want to, or a lease. And the leases are pretty standard one year per person or per unit here. The first time, the first like three apartments that I found that I really liked that were good prices, none of them were available, even though they were available online. So just because you see something online, even one person, they posted it like the week before and they said, oh no, I had my friend call to help translate. Oh no, they said like, oh no, it's not, it's not available, but we have, but tell me what you're looking for. And I'm like, you just posted it like last week. There's no way in this market it's, it's already gone. So, and then another one um, we, I called and they said, actually this was taken like, um, this was already booked or taken like a month ago. And I'm like, then why do you still have it online? If it's booked already, then why do you still have it online? So just take it with a grain of salt. Not everything online is actually still available. They just don't take it off. They don't take it off the website once it's done being sold or being rented. So finally, I find an apartment, the, the current one that I'm in now, and I call them and he's like, yeah, uh, it's still available if you want to come see it. And then this, this is when I first was learning how things, how business operates in Armenia. They don't book appointments. It's not really a cultural a uh, norm to have a set time and appointment. So I said, great, can I come tomorrow evening at five o'clock? And they said, oh, this is a very, at the time I didn't know this was so common, but they do this, oh, just call me in the morning and, and then see, and I'll tell you if it's okay to come at five o'clock. Okay, so I'm like, all right. So I had my friend call them back in the morning and they said, hi, like we're calling to call about the apartment. Can we, can we come today at five o'clock? They said, oh, call me after lunch. I'm not sure, da, 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 da. I'm like, these people, like, why can't you just, you don't know what you're doing in five hours from now. Just can you, t like, can you just write yourself a note, say be at the unit at five o'clock and just show up? Like, well, I don't understand why appointments are so difficult here. So again, we call a third time. Hi, we're calling about the apartment. Can we please come at five o'clock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime after five is, is okay. So we get there. <laughs> the guy is nice. I don't want to say his name. Um, he is a nice guy, but totally just everything they would teach you in real estate school or being a landlord landlord <laughs> he did the complete opposite as soon as we got in there um offered us like you know very nice he offered us coffee offered us like cognac offered us wine because it was my friend that was a girl so maybe he was trying to like butter us up we were inside the unit and he starts lighting up cigarettes meanwhile there's not a lot of windows in here and it was the middle of summer so i was suffoc i had my mask on because of covid I, I'm suffocating because of the heat. Plus, him, he's chain, chain smoking in the unit. I can't fucking breathe because of the smoke or the heat. There's The windows are tiny. <sighs> so finally, um, we start talking about specifics and the price. It was listed on List AM for 90,000 dirham. So when we were talking, he was saying it was 100,000 dirham. And I said, no, that doesn't. that's not what you listed it for. So he's like, oh, maybe the website is wrong. Maybe it was a mistake. I said, so I pulled out my phone. I just showed, I literally took a screenshot of his post. I said, no, it's 90,000 per month. It's a studio. It's really small and not renovated. So that's why it's so cheap. 90,000 per month. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
So as we were about to leave, I said to myself, wait, where the hell is the washing machine? He's like, oh, uh, we don't have a washing machine. If you want one, it's gonna be more. So I said, okay, how much more per month? Because I am not washing my, hand, my clothes by hand. I'm sorry, I do not have the time. I don't have the patience. So I was like, how much is it gonna be more per month for a washing machine? Not a dryer, just a washing machine. So he's like, it'll be about 10,000 more, 10,000 but on more per month. I said, okay, let me let me think about it. So I texted a bunch of my friends. I said, hey, is it is it normal for $10,000 more per month for a washing machine? They said, yeah, most of them said, yeah, that's that's a fair price. He's not trying to jip you. I'm like, okay, that's that's fine to me. We agree we agree on 100,000 but on per month. In that included water, and that's it. There's no gas in this apartment. Uh, there's no, it, everything's electric. So it's electric cooking and it's electric um, heating. The way that the water works is that it's inclu it's it's added on top of my rent. So I pay 100,000 dirham per month in rent plus 2,000 more for water and then whatever my electricity is. Now, <laughs> there is no like Pico here. If you're from like the East Coast, uh, we use Pico like to just log on and you just see how much you owe. We, you literally have to do the math and look at the meter. So what you have to do each month is get the old number or you get the new number, you subtract the new meter number. You know, like that thing that spins, you get the new number subtract it from the old number. So you have to remember what the old number was. Multiply it by 48. I guess it's like 48 that I'm per watt. I don't know. And then that gives you your, let's say multiply, you multiply by 48 gram, and that gives you your electricity for the month. In the summer, I was paying like maybe five to 6,000 gram for electricity in, in a month. Now that it's getting closer to winter, it's more like 10,000 to 15,000 gram for electricity in the month. Not that bad for one person, but still it, it, it's a pretty dramatic jump from summer to winter. The way that the, the lease works was, everybody said to me like, you, you're probably not gonna be able to pay through card. Like in the US, we usually just Venmo our landlords or your landlord might do PayPal or your landlord might do a physical check or sometimes they have online portals. There's a lot of companies out there that have portals for landlords here. If your landlord is like cool and hip, they might accept cards that they call it Armenian cards. It's like a bank card. It's kind of like their equivalent to Venmo. They say like send me on my card, which is basically like a bank transfer. I think the app is like AC, it's like ARCA or ARAC. So sometimes they accept it through that, but usually it's through cash. Checks aren't really a thing here. I don't think I've ever seen anybody write a check before. I said to myself, I'm comfortable with paying cash each month if I have a written contract. Now, the one thing that's nice about Armenia is that they're much more flexible when it comes to lease terms. So for example, back in the States, it's usually one year flat. Like there's usually, you usually don't hear of six months leases or two year leases. It's usually one year standard. Here, landlords are much more relaxed. Three months, I'm not really sure about, but definitely six months is pretty common. One year is common, or maybe a little bit like one year, six months you can ask for. So the terms are much more lenient, whereas in the States, it's usually just one year. He says, okay, if you wanna, if you wanna solidify the deal, um, you can come back to the unit and we can sign the contract and I'll pay my first month's rent and deposit. In the States, I will, at least for my city, it's common to do first month, last month, and security deposit. Usually security deposit is one month's rent. So you're basically paying rent three times, first month, last month, last month, and your security deposit. Here, he just asked for a first month and a security deposit. And he said, oh, I'm gonna use the security deposit to pay for the washing machine, blah, blah, blah. What I'm like, whatever. So I brought 200,000 dirham. The contract is very, very the, the one that he had was a very rudimentary contract. I had my friend translate the whole thing. Basically like my contract that I have for my tenant back in the States, it's about like five to six pages long. And it's very specific. The ones here, the one he gave me was like, one front page and one back page and the back page was just bit mo not mostly but there was a large chunk of it was just contact information so it's a very simple basic contract or lease i guess the details you just have to work out between you and your landlord the thing about armenia if you've never rented here before typically they come furnished which is nice but just because they're furnished doesn't mean it's going to be a nicely furnished apartment so my apartment furniture is super old i'm talking like from the 30s and 40s. Some of them are newer, but like are kind of half broken. If you get a newer renovated apartment, your furniture will probably be newer. It's really nice if you're moving here because you don't have to worry about buying a bed, buying a desk, buying chairs, buying kitchen supplies. But when I got here, 
like the kitchen supplies that he had, like they were the very basics, but they weren't nice. They were super old. So it can help you get by for the first few months while you're trying to like figure stuff out. It's nice if you're coming from abroad, so you don't have to worry about like, even like blankets, like most landlords will like provide you blankets. They're gonna be old, they're gonna be ugly. Like everything's brown and tan. They love brown and tan here. When you've tour apartments, you've never seen so many brown and gray and like just tan. They love tan here. So you're going to see so much tan and brown carpets, brown sofas, brown seats. I don't understand like why they love brown so much. It's like kind of depressing. That's kind of my thing in a nutshell. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to extend this one. The only reason why I would extend this apartment beyond six months is because if, if my lawyer suggests to keep the same address because of my residency paperwork, I might consider staying a little bit longer just because of keeping the same address while I'm doing my paperwork. But if he says, no, there's no problem, you can change your address at any time and it won't mess anything up, then I might continue. If you wanna know about prices, I would say on the very, very lowest end in Yerevan, I would say anywhere from 100 to 150,000 dirham is like the very low end. That is like for a one bedroom, unrenovated. So 100 to 150,000 dirham per month can get you in a one bedroom, old unrenovated apartment in Kenton, you're looking at more like 200,000 per month for like an average 200,000 dirham per month for an average quality average uh apartment but if you're in Kenton, it's a pretty good location the nicer apartments in Kenton, they can go for anywhere i only really know one bedroom so if you're looking at two or three bedrooms i'm not really sure but for one bedrooms i would say for a nice renovated apartment in the center maybe like 250 thousand dirham to three hundred thousand dirham per month and then it can keep i mean if you want super great locations super renovated super spacious um i don't know security cameras uh keypad at the door maybe it could be like three hundred thousand per month dirham and more but i've seen ones around one hundred fifty thousand dirham per month the one thing also that's nice about armenia is that prices are negotiable so in, in the u.s the listing price is the price. There is no, you don't question it. Like if you don't agree with the price for the for the rent, you don't ask to see it. Here, they're a little bit more flexible. So if something is posted for 150,000 dirham per month, you could ask and say, um, me, oh, hey, I, I like it, but can you do like 130,000 per month? It doesn't mean they're gonna accept it, but they're a little bit more lenient when it comes to prices here, depending on your landlord. So it really sucks. And each landlord is different because there's not really like good, renter protection laws here and there's not really good landlord protection laws either you're just kind of like on your own it's really based on a merit and trust system some landlords are great some suck so for example mine's really nice and if i have a problem i can tell him about it and he may or may not fix it but so far the, the couple things that i've asked to fix he's fixed it but i've had friends that have lived in apartments where they specifically got a, an apartment because it has air conditioning and when they said hey the air conditioning or the heater doesn't work they said Sorry, you're on your own. If you want to fix it, you have to pay for it yourself. The thing about Armenian landlords is that if something breaks that they don't want to fix, they don't really have to fix it if if it's not like a fundamental part of the property. And even then, like if there's a fundamental part, they could still say, sorry, you have to fix it yourself or you have to pay extra for it. My one friend, she's paying a good amount for her apartment and there is air conditioning units, like the ductless system units. But she said, hey, it's the middle of summer. I can't sleep at night, it's so hot. They said, sorry, if you want it to be fixed, you have to pay for it yourself. Whereas in America, that would never fly. Like if if your like hot water tank is not working, if your, air, if your HVAC system is not working, like your landlord is completely responsible for that. Here, mm, if they're in a good mood, they might fix it. If, if it's an expensive, if it's something that's expensive to fix, they're probably just gonna say, sorry, you're on your own. So just because something says it's included, like, so let's say if your apartment says it includes, um, I don't know, a electronic keypad or an HVAC system or a television, but let's say your television stops working or the keypad stops working, don't expect the landlord to fix it. You you might be completely on your own. The last, cause I said there was three, I said there was three options to kind of look for an apartment. The last one is personal friends and personal relationships. Sometimes people find apartments for rent because they have, people within their own network that have a friend or family member that owns an apartment or owns multiple apartments in the city. And it's kind of like a word of mouth thing. They don't post it online. They don't find a broker. So the first one to look is through List AM. The second to look for is through a broker or an agent. And the last is through a 
through friends and family because uh, if they inherited an apartment within Yerevan, they might be just renting it out to friends and family but never listed on a website or anything like that. The one thing I will say that the, the, I've heard stories, the further out of Yerevan that you go, the more, even more relaxed it becomes. So I have a contract, but I've talked to my friends in Gumini. They don't have contracts for their apartment and they pay cash. So if you move outside of Yerevan, definitely don't expect to be able to pay through some type of electronic means and don't expect to have a contract. Now, if you find a landlord that is okay with contracts, like you, maybe there are landlords in Gyumdi or Vananzor that are okay with having contracts or being able to pay per month with an electronic way or like, a, or like an app. But basically the further outside of the city you get, it becomes much, much more relaxed, but not necessarily in a good way. You basically have less protection if you don't have a contract and you don't have as many clear cut rules. The last story I wanna tell is, <laughs> When it comes to things like notices or entering the apartment or showing the apartment while you're still living there, uh, Armenian landlords don't always uh, have the same level of notification as what you might be used to in the West. So for example, my one friend now is renting an apartment in Kenderon and one day he just woke up to like banging on the door and he was he was sleeping. It was like not early in the morning, but it was like mid morning, and but he was still in bed. And so he's like, bang, bang, bang. And he opens the door and they're like, hi, we're here to, to see the apartment. And he's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And he's like, oh, your landlord tried to call you, but um, you didn't pick up. And he's like, when? They're like, this morning. He's like, of course I didn't pick up. I've been sleeping. <laughs> he, when he asked the landlord about it, he gave less than like a few hours notice. And even without him confirming that it's okay, that he's gonna be home, they still had a key to enter. So they were about to just walk into the apartment without even without even him knowing about it. And like, what if he, what if he had money out or electronics out or what if he had guests over? Like, you, like um, so in America, you could never enter an apartment uh, if it's your tenant with without at least confirmation that they acknowledge that you're coming within 24 hours. Sometimes within leases, there's speculations that if, it, if they give you a notice within like 48 hours, they can then enter the property, maybe like 24 hours and you respond. But like just calling you three hours or two hours before they actually come and then they were gonna enter no matter whether you said, it, said it's okay or not is like completely mind baffling. So if you know that the apartment's gonna be rented out after you or your lease is up soon, or it might be sold to somebody else after you, you might get random knocks on the door saying, hey, we're here to look at the apartment. And then you have no idea because because they just don't give notice. And and when you question it, it's like you're you're being like by you saying, hey, I need at least 24 hours notice. Then they're like, then they think you're like being like, I don't know, high maintenance or something. Or like, why is it needed? Like, what's the big deal? They're just looking at the apartment. And it's like, no, like my whole life is in here. All my important documents are here. All my electronics, all my valuable possessions. I don't know, what if I had guests over? It's so... When it comes to that type of relationship, <laughs> it's different. It's really different. The last topic I don't know about, but would be interesting to learn about is subleasing. I've never heard of somebody subleasing an, an apartment in Armenia. All my friends that all my friends that have had apartments basically stay to the very end of their lease. So I don't know if landlords are okay in general with, with subleasing or not, or if they just break the contract. I don't know how that works. Here are a couple of questions that I think you should definitely ask when you're about to tour the property. Number one is A, is it available? Number two is confirm the price because the price that they have on the website, either the number is correct, but how it's written is misleading. So confirm the price per month. Next thing is confirm if it has um, central heating through gas or central, he central heating through electricity. Next is the water. Is the water included in the price or are you gonna pay extra on top of the rent for water? And if so, how much? Internet is also an interesting topic. Usually people bring their own routers and their own modems. Sometimes landlords will say that you can use their own internet. Um, but most of what I hear is if you have your own apartment, you people usually bring their own. So what you do is like, for example, you come, you go to Ucom, say, hey, I'm moving out of my old apartment, cancel that old router, and then they'll set up a new contract with a new router in the new apartment. The next topic I would ask about is um, how do you pay per month? Is it a cash system or is it, can you, do they accept card? If they accept card, I highly recommend to do it through a, a app or a card so that way you can um, remember and have proof of payment. But if they say it's only cash, 
Um, that's kind of some of the way that it goes here for, especially for older, older landlords. Next is a contract. M make sure that you have a con. If you're in Yerevan, get a contract or even if it's very simple or just, even if it's like a, a written, uh, a typed email from their official email to yours, it's better than nothing. Now, if you're living in Gumi or Vanazor, like I said, it's much more culturally relaxed there. So if you really push for a lease or a contract, they might kind of get annoyed with you. The next thing is about uh, what is included in the apartment. So for example, make a list for what's important to you. Like if there is a HVAC, test the HVAC system before you pay your deposit because they might say, oh yeah, we have central heating and central air conditioning. But if you move in and then test it and find out that it doesn't work, you're f Next is like the hot water tank. Like just make sure that the hot water works. Like sometimes the if the system is old or if, the, I don't know, if I don't know, something happened with electricity or the wires get crossed, so if there's hot water, make sure the hot water actually gets hot while you're there on your tour. Make sure that the toilet flushes and there's no leaks. Make sure that you uh, use the, the knobs and the, the spigots or whatever, the, the faucets in the bathroom, in the kitchen to make sure like they're all, the, the handles don't fall off, that there's no leaks underneath the sink. You know, just like basic maintenance stuff. Also, I would say if there's anything that needs to be moved in or out, make sure that it happens before you move in because basically once you move in, you don't really have that much control over the property. So like, let's say they have like this big random ugly sofa or they have a, I don't know, something that's blocking the door. Like sometimes like, people like put like things in front of their apartment door, like in a building that could be like obtrusive to what like getting by. So you could say like, hey, before I move in, I want that cabinet out of there. It, it might take you a few times to ask and you might have to be kind of a dick about it, but I would say get it done before you move in because once you're actually there, they're not gonna give a shit about you and they're probably not gonna accommodate you unless it's like a real serious problem. Now, if a neighbor complains, they're gonna do it. But if you complain, they're not gonna, they're not gonna care at all. That's basically apartment hunting in Armenia. Um, this is my first apartment on my own here. I'm gonna probably have to start looking for a different apartment soon. If you have other specific questions about how it works with finding an apartment in Armenia, you can leave them down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. Or if you have any of your own stories. So if you ever got an apartment in Armenia before and you want to tell the world about your story and your suggestions, again, leave them down there. And I'm sure one of us can, can help each other. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.